was that guy? Well, how much time you got, Natasha? Because I'm about to tell you the entire plot of your movie, including all its big surprise reveals, four months before it actually hits theaters. Who's the supreme intelligence officer now? <laughs> Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show where two minutes of trailer footage becomes 15 minutes of theory. Man, talk about a great 2019 for Scarlett Johansson, right? She was nominated for Best Actress in the Super Depressing Marriage Story. She was nominated for Best Supporting Actress for the also super depressing Jojo Rabbit. She had a key role in the highest grossing movie of all time with Endgame and also was in Captain Marvel. I mean, in one year, that's four massive films, two award nominations, and an equal number of on-screen deaths. I mean, she is figuratively killing it, and the movies in turn are literally killing her. And 2020 is just keeping her momentum going as Marvel rewinds back in time to tell a prequel story about the iconic Natasha Romanoff in their upcoming movie, Black Widow. Now, can I just take a moment to say how much I love the name Black Widow for a deadly female spy? I mean, everyone knows that a bite from a Black Widow spider is unlikely to be fatal? And most of the over 2,000 bites each year don't even need medical attention? What? Has everything I've ever been told about spiders a lie? I mean, do they even eat their husbands? Yes. Oh, okay. But only in laboratories with unnatural conditions? Even in Australia, they've only managed to rack up one death in 37 years? Okay, something's telling me that Black Widow spiders just have themselves a really solid PR team. So I guess in all fairness, the spider might not be all that deadly, but Natasha certainly is. And based on the trailers, this new movie is going to expose to us a bit more about her mysterious backstory, the training program that made her into the widow she is today, as well as other members of their little bloody ballet squad. But there's one main question that the newest trailer is just begging for us to answer. And that's the clip that I played at the top of the video. Who's that guy? Who is our main villain? Who is the face behind the mask? Based on the outfit, the shield, and past history with Black Widow in the comics, we know that it's going to be a character named Taskmaster. We'll get to a bit more about him in a minute. The bigger question is who is under that mask. In fact, Marvel is so intent on keeping the true identity of Taskmaster such a mystery that he doesn't even have a confirmed actor yet, which is very weird for a company that's traditionally used villain positions for stunt casting. I mean, they've sent noted bad guys like Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio or Josh Brolin's Thanos out on the talk show circuit to push their movies hard. So why? Why would they be so tight-lipped about Black Widow's main villain? Well, with this being a spy movie, it means that the reveal of who's under that mask is going to be a big twist for the audience. Audience. Except, here's the thing, I feel pretty darn confident I already know the answer. Scratch that, I feel really confident I know the answer. The trailers are very clearly trying to misdirect you about who is behind that mask. So today, I'm gonna look at the potential candidates, debunk them all, and then tell you the reveal of Marvel's next massive superhero hit months before it hits the big screen. What do you have to say about that, Scarlett Johansson? Are you one of those people that goes online and then you look at all the screen grabs? You are. No. You're one of those people? I'm not judging you. You are completely judging me right now. Let's start by learning a bit more about who this guy is and what his traditional power set consists of. Taskmaster in Marvel Comics is usually a guy by the name of Tony Masters. Masters has an ability called photographic reflexes, which is similar to having photographic memory, except that beyond just recalling things with incredible accuracy, Masters can accurately reproduce the actions of anyone he sees. It's an incredibly cool power that makes him a very difficult enemy to defeat, considering he can just always counter you with your own moves. He's like the ultimate Uno reverse card. However, his memory can be overwhelmed by this ability, so he'll often forget simple things like the names of his loved ones or who he used to work for. Taskmaster is a mercenary and will work for the highest bidder without a care for their ideologies, which means that sometimes Taskmaster is as much a good guy as he is a bad guy. He's worked for pretty much everyone from S.H.I.E.L.D. to Thunderbolt Ross, who, once you know it, is also going to be in this movie. And that's far from all we know about this new Marvel movie. Thanks to Natasha's untimely demise in Endgame, we know for sure that this movie is going to be a prequel. This sentiment's been echoed by everyone working on the movie. Scarlett Johansson even gave us a more specific time frame for the majority of the events of the plot. It takes place yeah. after 
the Civil War. I'm listening. And before the Infinity War. Wait, are those all the wars? No, you may have missed a couple there. World War One, World War Two, Vietnam War, Korea War, War of the Roses, or my personal favorite, Spanish-American. Little cross-cultural excitement going on there. So, in a reflection of the comics, and knowing that Thunderbolt Ross is making an appearance here, it's likely that the story of this new Black Widow will, at least in part, revolve around Ross hunting down Natasha in the wake of her betrayal of Tony Stark and the Sokovia Accords. If you can manage to remember that far back in the series. You remember when the government was all like, you superheroes are dangerous and need to be supervised? And Captain America was all like, no man, I'm a rebel now. And Tony Stark was totally, you're right government, you pay me a lot in government contracts so I kind of have to agree. Also, for some reason I grew a conscience because the story demanded it. And wouldn't you know it, while we were all distracted by Spider-Man showing up, Black Widow was there, apparently. Somewhere back there. You see her? If you squint, you can see kind of the black blur just flashing across the screen. Yeah, she's way back there fighting the other guy who doesn't have superpowers. Well, anyway, she had to choose a side, right? She chose one, but then she ended up flip-flopping. Anyway, she went against Tony and the government, and so with this movie coming canonically after Civil War, it fits perfectly in the timeline that they'd now be looking to track her down. T'Challa told Ross what she did, so they're coming for we also know that at least some of it's gonna take place even earlier in Natasha's career. Aside from flashbacks to her days training in the program, we can expect to see at least part of the movie taking place before Natasha joined S.H.I.E.L.D. in the first place. We know this because the very opening shot of the trailer shows the Liberty statue in Budapest. If that's not ringing any bells, let's take a brief trip even further back down memory lane to the original Avengers movie. Just like Budapest all over again! You and I remember Budapest very differently. So we know that at least at some point in this movie, they're going to be in Budapest, a place where Hawkeye and Natasha have a long history. We also know from that same movie that they met because Hawkeye was ordered to kill Natasha, but Clint ended up ignoring the order and recruiting her instead. I got on S.H.I.E.L.D.'s radar in a bad way. Agent Barton was sent to kill me. He made a different call. So could Taskmaster actually be Hawkeye? It's a pretty loose connection, but then fans spotted this scene in the trailer that seemed to make up for a real theory. <gasps> He's using a bow! He's associated with Black Widow! Is this potentially how they met? Is Hawkeye the one behind that mask? Absolutely not. Remember, Taskmaster's whole shtick is copying other people's moves. The fact that Taskmaster is using a bow means that Hawkeye is probably in the movie. Perhaps just briefly in order to teach Taskmaster you usage of the weapon, which in turn gives us a trailer shot that gets us to all think that it might actually be him. I mean, Disney has misdirected us plenty of times in recent history with their trailers. <laughs> last look, sir. But think about it. If ScarJo was at least being partially honest when she said that the movie takes place between Civil War and Infinity War, well, there's no way that Hawkeye's the bad guy. Hawkeye, as you might remember, was part of Captain America's team during the Civil War, and as a result, ended up in house arrest, which is why at the beginning of Endgame, we see him in an ankle monitor. Now, as established in Ant-Man 2, these monitors are easy enough to slip off, but pulling the same move twice seems pretty cheap for the MCU. Besides, what mission could possibly be so important to Clint that he, one, escapes his confines, two, changes his entire appearance, and three, tries to kill one of his best friends all before calming down with his family and then doing it all over again in Endgame. That's just a really muddled, unclear story arc. Also, this wouldn't be the first time Hawkeye was used as the bad guy, and Marvel's been pretty upfront about avoiding that pitfall again. I've done the whole mind control thing. Not a fan. No, after looking at the evidence, Taskmaster isn't just some new villain of the week, and he isn't Hawkeye. But I do believe that he's an old friend who turned evil. I also believe that this he is actually a she. My theory is that Taskmaster, by the end of the movie, will be revealed to be her. This one, sitting at the table, Melina Vostikov. You got fat. Yep, the one with the killer comedy line from the trailer is gonna end up being our villain. It's also why all the trailers are trying their darndest to misdirect you. Who the hell is that guy? Who the heck is that guy? That's not a guy, Natasha, but Disney is trying their darndest to get us to think that it is. Now, let me back up a bit and give you some history on Melina Vostikov and why she's likely to be this film's big bad. In the comics lore, Melina appears in the Marvel Fanfare series, where she's shown growing up in the same training program as Natasha, and the movie seems to keep this continuity in place. Family. Back together again. However, Melina is not quite as skilled as Natasha, and this too seems to be canon in the MCU. You'll break them. Only the breakable ones. You're made of marble. 
In fact, in the comics, having to live in the shadow of the Black Widow causes Melina to develop a deep hatred for Natasha. Eventually, she leaves the service of Russia and becomes a freelance assassin by the name Iron Maiden, where one of her targets is, you guessed it, Black Widow herself. Now, clearly, Iron Maiden and Taskmaster are two different characters in the comics, but if you look at their abilities, they're actually fairly similar. Melina is a master martial artist, master assassin, master spy, and a weapons expert. Basically, everything you need Taskmaster to be. Heck, you would barely even need to change their costumes. Hood, check. Bodysuit, check. Mask, done. Additionally, Tony Masters in the comics injects himself with a knockoff of the super serum that created Captain America and in turn becomes Taskmaster. Melina, it seems, may be involved in a similar kind of experiment. She's also involved in some quite complicated scientific research, which is at the heart of the film story. Given the super soldier serum's prevalence in the MCU so far, it's certainly not out of the question that Melina could simply gain all her powers from the serum after failing the Black Widow program enough times. She's been cycled through the Red Room Black Widow program five times. There's also the surprising bit of physical evidence. In fact, the whole thing that got me started on this theory in the first place is this shot from the trailer. Here, David Harbour's Red Guardian is taken on Taskmaster in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Red Guardian goes in for the headbutt, and you can see quite clearly that he has himself some height on Taskmaster. In real life, David Harbour is 6 foot 3 inches tall, while Rachel Weiss, the woman who plays Melina Vostikov, is 5 foot 6 inches. That would explain to us how Red Guardian could have himself nearly a full head of height over Taskmaster. Lastly though, let's talk about the family elements of this movie. Red Guardian specifically calls Melina, Yelena, and Natasha family in the trailer. Family, back together again. But by Endgame, we know that this family no longer exists. I used to have nothing. And then I got this. This job. This family. Man, Marvel, maybe you need to start adding spoiler warnings to your trailers. But this means that by the end of Black Widow, the other members of Natasha's quote-unquote family here are either going to wind up dead or no longer on friendly terms. We know Yelena is likely to take over the mantle of Black Widow for the Avengers in the mainline MCU movies going forward because, well, you know, Natasha's dead. And because Black Widow is ScarJo's final required movie in her contract. Also, also, we know this because something very similar happened to her in the comics. So this right here, my friends, is going to be the face of our new Black Widow for the next generation of movies. That's pretty solidly in place. Red Guardian, meanwhile, is likely gonna die because, well, we don't see him coming out of any Doctor Strange portals at the end of Endgame. I mean, way to not show up for the party in Earth's biggest battle, ya goon. Which again, leaves us alone with Melina, who, you know, would have had a falling out of the family if she went around trying to kill everyone. Makes those Christmas get-togethers really awkward. Now, I know what I'm suggesting here would be a big shift in Marvel lore, but then again, this wouldn't be the first time that Marvel swapped a character's name, or even their gender. It's also something Disney in 2020 would totally do. After years of people questioning the MCU for a lack of female representation, for them getting made fun of of letting Wonder Woman get to it first, to basically have Black Widow be Females Are Strong the movie is totally on brand for them right now. Natasha unmasking Taskmaster to reveal that, whoa, girls can be super cool villains too, who are strong and independent? That wouldn't just be a big twist, but it would also be a strong message moment that Disney won't pass up. So when you look at all the evidence, we get ourselves a pretty complete picture of what this movie is going to wind up being. An appearance by Hawkeye, a visit to Budapest, chased by General Ross, a passing of the torch to Yelena as the new Black Widow, and the betrayal of a family member when it's revealed that under the mask, Taskmaster was Melina the whole time. Clearly, I got that right. That's why you're not answering my questions. Get on that internet. Get on that. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And subscribe to have all of Marvel's new movies spoiled for you by hardcore research and deduction. Share them with a friend and show them how smart and cultured the stuff you watch online is. Or heck, you know what? Just subscribe so you can rub it in my face when the movie comes out and I'm completely wrong about everything I predicted. Any way you slice it, you should just subscribe. The button's on screen right now. I've been Matt Pat, and I'll see you all next week.